I got my first prosthesis when I was six weeks old. I got my first myoelectric, which I'm sure you're familiar is the functional electric arm, um, when I was uh, four months, ten days. Since I got my prosthetic so young, I've always stayed really up to date on what's new and what's out, like when the ILM first came out, which was different from the regular myoelectrics. Um, and then I saw, of course, they, the, the Luke arm, which is the DECA arm. When that first came out, I was like, what is this? I got involved with Advanced Arm Dynamics. I don't know if you've heard of them, but they're a specialty prosthetics company, that, uh, not company, but um, agency that only deals with upper limb amputees. And they requested three arms for me because I want three arms. Three arms to do half the things that most people can do with just their regular hand. But the conversation I had with the insurance company was pretty much like the guy when I talked to him, the social media guy, was like, it seems like they'll cover one. And I was like, that sucks. So like, you want to know why that sucks? Because you're making me choose. And it's not like I'm choosing, I'm asking for three arms that all do the same thing. It's like the cosmetic arm allows me to disclose when I want to disclose that I have one arm. And it lets me feel normal. It lets me go into places without everybody staring at me. My boyfriend is a second lieutenant in the Marine Corps, and he just graduated, had a big, huge graduation. It was when I was wearing the DECA arm. I had to sit there and go, do I wear this arm, which is going to draw a lot of attention to me, or do I wear my cosmetic and let the attention be on these guys that just accomplished something really great? And then I have the functional arm, the B-Bionic that I want that does daily living tasks, that allows me to tie my shoes when I want to, that lets me carry, you know, two armfuls of groceries in the house, that lets me be able to pull something off the shelf and open a can, like all these daily living tasks, independent living, like period, without having to ask people for help. I can do those with that arm. And then I wanted that activity specific because I'm tired of watching my friends do fun stuff. Like, you know, I would love to go try rock climbing. I would love to try kayaking. I would love to try all these things. And then they go pick one. I'm like, I don't want to pick one. Like, you're telling me I either can pick, you know, Looking, looking relatively normal, but not being able to do any of the things I want to do. You're telling me that I can pick this one where I can do daily living tasks, but forget about doing, you know, kayaking because trying to get out of the functional arm is a horrible idea. And then, you know, I, I have this functional arm that the B Bionic's black, which is cool. It's very stealthy and awesome looking, and you know, Terminator like. But uh, there's no way I'm walking into somewhere and, and someone's not noticing my arm. The DECA arm has something that no other arm on the market has right now, and it's this wrist function, uh, the flexion and extension. All the other arms, they just rotate 360 degrees, which is fun as a party trick with the spinning arm, you know. But for function-wise, like, it was the first time I was able to take a fork and put food in my mouth. Because if you think about it, if your wrist is rigid, you can't reach how to get food. So, like, you actually have to bend or to go to scratch your head. Unless I want to scratch my head with the top of my hand, you can't actually. So flexion and extension is, is huge. Oh, the worst thing was this water bottle. I was, I I guess because I've been using my arm for so long, I'm very confident. So what I couldn't drink, like what the skill is, you had to open the water bottle, pick it up with the DECA, and then I had to drink out of it. So think about how much your hand moves. So the first time I did it, I squeezed the bottle. It exploded everywhere. I couldn't get it to my mouth. I was so frustrated, and I was like, no one can do this. Because you really need to know how hard you're grabbing something. Yeah. And if you're picking up an egg, you're picking up a can. You know, when I was a little kid, everyone would come up to me, like, crush this can, crush this can. Yeah. You know, but you really need to know, because if you're shaking someone's hand, and that's got, especially the DECA, who has, has a, a pretty decent amount of pinch pressure, as well as it can hold, like, a 40-pound bag. I could lift it up over my head. Like, you know, you need to know how hard you're grabbing somebody. Because Gil would shake at someone's hand and hurt them. So I would constantly be sitting there doing this. And, like, you know, you pinch yourself. You try to figure out, you know. But I couldn't technically feel, like, you know, it wasn't, like, hot or cold or any, like, pressure, sensory type, type of stuff like that. I actually just um, put in my information to be in another research study that has nothing to do with prosthetics but has to do with um, neural patterns and brain waves. And they're looking at... Amputees who don't wear prosthetics compared to amputees who do wear prosthetics, congenital amputees, traumatic amputees, and those with hand transplants, and how their brains have formed differently or been able to adapt, like synaptic plasticity and all those things like that. When they're doing all this nerve stuff now, I'm getting worried because I'm going, I never had a hand, and they always say, like, oh, you probably have a nerve bundle at the end of your arm, but, like, I don't know that. I mean, I'm sure I do, but 
to be able to, you know, hook it up to the correct nerves, like, I don't know what, what I have or how it works or in comparison to somebody who's had two arms and then lost their arm, you know that they have everything right. Everything in there, everything in there is right. It's just their arm's gone, like, you know. So have you, um, you haven't had any surgery to rewire any nerves, right? No, no, I have not. I've thought about it, but the thing that scares me is with how fast technology is moving, that becoming obsolete and having to get more stuff or having to get it changed or having to get, so at this point I'm kind of just sticking with external type things and, I mean, obviously at some point that's where it's going to go.